What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about Shinmu 3 because I finally got a chance to play it, and this is easily one of the greatest days of my entire life. Now I want to talk about this game, how it's been changed, how it's different from the previous games, but most importantly, I really want to just ask, was this worth the wait? The Shinmu community has been begging for this game for nearly 20 years. There's been trending hashtags, big giant viral videos by amazing YouTubers like Adam Korolik, so many people have been pushing for this to be created and then of course we had the Kickstarter campaign which was just massive and luckily I managed to get in on that which is how I got this demo and now that I've had a chance to really just wander around this village and play the game myself I can say that the game is a big departure from my expectations it's good but it's also very very much separate from its predecessors Shinmu 1 and 2 were very much centralized they were in big cities and had lots of combat and lots of different little storylines and stuff. And it seems like what they're trying to do with this game is scale it down in a certain way, but it seems like it's working. So basically, throughout this trial demo, there's one main objective, which is to try and find this bookie with a scar on his face. As you wander around, pretty much everybody you can talk to, you ask the same question. Have you seen the bookie with a scar on his face? Some people will give you hints and clues, the breadcrumbs that lead to your target. Target. And once you track the guy down, of course he challenges you to a fight, which is pretty difficult. Now I want to talk about combat here just because I think that this is by far the biggest change they've made, but also the one that I think actually makes the most sense. The original two Shinmu games were certainly fun to get into some nice little scraps, but they were a little bit cartoonish. I mean, at the end of Shinmu 1, you're basically fighting 100 people at once with your bare freaking hands, and some people People even discovered that you can absolutely beat it without being touched if you manage to get good at dodging through blows and really trying to trick the throw system. Well this time around, it actually feels like a fighting game. Now the original idea behind Shinmu was actually a fighting game RPG. It seems like Yu Suzuki, the director of this, he's actually managed to achieve that. So now the way this works is that all the face buttons on your controllers are different kicks or punches that can be chained together to do specific combos. And then, by using your two triggers, basically, R will actually do your special attack, which in this trial demo was the tornado kick, and then L was your block. But it doesn't seem like you can block forever. The biggest thing, though, is that I noticed that pulling off these combos is very, very vital. In the couple fights I had in this demo, these people actually want to beat your face in. So if you just be careless, or you just run around too much, you're going to lose. Now, obviously, the other big difference is that this is all done over the shoulder now, so you're almost sort of aiming each of your punches. It works well, but I don't think that there's going to be big group fights like there were in Shinmu 1 and 2, simply because this definitely seems highly tailored towards one-on-one -on -one fights. During the couple encounters I had in this demo, it seemed like everything was very much just centered on, hey, there's a guy in front of you and he wants to try and defeat you. Beat him before you're dead. And I like that. It definitely works pretty well. And the big thing about this is that clearly the major push of Shinmu 3 is becoming more realized in the simulation aspect. Now what I mean by that is, when you have health, health is now always on the screen. Everything actually contributes to your health. If you are just full brass sprinting and you're just running everywhere, this will actually fatigue you. It will slowly drain Ryo's health meter, which means that if you get in a surprise fight, you can't win because you're at like one freaking health. This also means that if you get in a couple different scuffles in a row, you need to try and eat in between or else you're going to be out of health before it's all over. Eating is definitely a big part of this game, and in the trial demo, they gave me like a backpack full of food, which meant that I could eat tons of different bananas and pineapples. I didn't really have to try and worry too much about my health, since a lot of times, before you get in an encounter, it will actually pause the game for you and say, hey, um, you're really low health, maybe you should try and peel this banana. 
in. So I think that it's probably not going to be something that's ever difficult. It's probably just going to be something to try and increase your immersion. And really, I have to say that world building and immersion in general is certainly where Shinmu 3 shines the brightest. I mean, let's just wander around here for a second and kind of take in the sights and sounds. We are deep in the Chinese outback this time, far from civilization, and there's just these tiny little villages that seem to be in that interesting era where they have some technology but not a lot of it. People are still cooking over fires and stuff. At one point I noticed a phone booth that was clearly broken down because who are these people going to call? But that's what's interesting about it. As I kind of just went around and tested stuff out, I was really kind of just admiring the fact that this really captures a part of games that nobody else really brushes against. But more than that, it's interesting to see Ryo himself entering this real fish out of the water scenario. He is kind of lost. He is kind of out of his element and kind of honestly overwhelmed by everything around him, which helps us also get into it. Now, I just want to talk a little bit more about the world because I love it. It's so cool to just get a chance to wander around and see this rushing river and talk to random people and gather clues or just do some of the random mini games. Because let's face it, part of the reason that Shinmu is so fun is the fact that there's just so random junk. I mean, there's just stuff you can do that doesn't really matter, but is optional and fantastic. So in this trial demo, they only had a couple little games I could play, but each of them were pretty fun. There's like basic gambling called like on top where you try and just basically roll dice and get higher. There's of course things like turtle racing where you press a bunch of the face buttons in your controller to basically charge up your Super Saiyan turtle and outrun the competition. Both of these are pretty simplistic but to me the one that's definitely the star of the show is Lucky Hit. Yes that's right the gambling thing extraordinaire that doesn't require a power cord to make you laugh is back. I like Lucky Hit a lot. It's certainly a staple of the franchise, but I think it's important to notice that most of the mini games that we're going to be playing in Shinmu 3 are probably going to be more along these lines. I don't believe that Sega actually gave him permission to bring back any of the arcade games that existed in Shinmu 1 and 2, because Shinmu 3 is just being made by Yu Suzuki and the awesome Kickstarter supporters. It's not like anybody else really had a chance to jump in on this. So because of it, there's not going to be any things like OutRun or Space Harrier. There's probably not going to be an arcade in the typical sense. But still, this is pretty dang radical. The only real fear I have about this game is the fact that there is some stuff in this that still seems a little bit weird, and I hope it has a chance to be polished. Graphically, I think that this exceeds my expectations. I think that it does look pretty dang good. There's a lot of nice environmental details and big sweeping mountains, and there's not really any load screens. You can pretty much just run from one end of the map to the other very seamlessly, which is very, very nice. My one thing that it seems like visually is a bit strange is that the mouths do not line up with the talking whatsoever. People kind of talk like a little bit of a puppet show. Now this is a trial demo and we are like two months from release so they could have a chance to fix that or it could be that I know that some games will actually sync the mouth movements up to the Japanese and so the American is just basically like read right across it and that's maybe what's going on here. Either way I gotta say that as as a mega fan, and as somebody who actually spent hundreds of dollars on the Kickstarter, I am satisfied. I just hope that this gives us some sort of resolution and some real comfort. These gameplay changes and the way the world works now is certainly cool. I think that this is some pretty bold strategy that I think will pay off. But I just hope that at the end of the day, we really get some good and nice fights. The reason we have Shinmu 3 is to actually try and resolve one of the best video games game stories ever made. I want to see Lon D. I want to see some big fights. I want to see Ryo find some sort of peace, even if it is just paltry. But instead, I just really don't know. I guess we're going to find out relatively soon. This game comes out in November, the same day as Death Stranding, and I am, of course, going to play it and do a giant review. My plan right now is actually, when the game comes out, I want to beat the game, I want to do a big review, and then I want to do a separate video all about the spoilers, because there's probably going to be a bunch of crazy story stuff I absolutely gotta dig into. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Did you get a chance to actually play the Shinmu Kickstarter demo? 
Are you as excited as I am? I am losing it. This is such a great freaking day for Sega fans everywhere. Thank you so much for watching gamers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Hey, here's just a dumb little random fact for fun. So I've been making YouTube videos for years and years and years, but most of you probably didn't know that. I was actually making content like seven or eight years ago. I was just making random YouTube videos purely for fun. I actually talked about the rumors of a Kickstarter demo about like a year before the Kickstarter was even revealed. Look how young I am. Look at that. It's little baby Dreamcast guy. It's just so fun to look back. This game is a big deal and I'm glad I'm here for it. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.